heavyweight division finally back. It is. It's back, and we are actually already in phase one of a golden era of heavyweights. Look. Once upon a time, Stephen A. Um, in, uh, in in heavyweight boxing, Jack London, the racist author of um, The Call of the Wild, you know, when Jack Johnson was champion, you know, early in the 1900s, said they needed a great white hope to restore the dignity to the, you know, all this kind of stuff. And throughout the 20th century, there was this sense that um, America really wanted a Rocky Marciano that everyone got very excited. But actually, the biggest stars were African-American um, heavyweights, Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis, Mike Tyson, right? These were the biggest stars of sports. And eventually Lennox Lewis comes along. He's this British heavyweight who's beating everybody. And people start lamenting, oh, what happened to the American heavyweight? The answer is the NFL, actually. And then Klitschko came along, Stephen A. You're a knowledgeable boxing guy. You know that Klitschko had a boring run. He was fighting in Germany, very technical style. Even his name is difficult to put consonants in a row, right? And English was not his native language. And so people lost interest in the heavyweights. Then all of a sudden, Anthony Joshua comes around, undefeated, always in shape, 365 day a year, athlete, Anglican name, easy for people, speaks English as his native language, more importantly, has a nice flowing fluid style. And Tyson Fury, probably the biggest personality in boxing, also English as his native language, named after Mike Tyson, obviously influenced by Muhammad Ali. By the way, Anthony Joshua here tomorrow. That's reality. Even the guy he's fighting, Jerome Miller. Also big personality, nice fluid style. Stephen A, and then Deontay Wilder, an actual American, right? Who's a huge all-time puncher with the right hand. And not only that, all the guys I mentioned, Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, have special stuff inside them that when they get knocked down or hurt, they get back up to win or finish the fight. It is very rare, Stephen A, that the heavyweight division has more fighter in it, it is exceedingly rare, where it has many fighters at the top who are not only excellent, but are fan-friendly and charismatic and make dramatic fights, but that's what we have right now in heavyweight boxing. Well, let me say this. The heavyweight division is attractive. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm not trying to sit up there and throw shade on anything. I like Tyson Fury's mouth and his bravado, skills. Not necessarily his punch of power. We know what punch of power Deontay Wilder has, and I appreciate that. But ultimately, it comes down to black men in terms of Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, because those are the, that's the matchup that everybody really, really wants to see. If you watched Tyson Fury, you didn't get the impression that he was somebody that could take out Deontay Wilder, that he was going to box him and outbox him for 12 rounds and win him that way. That's what you saw. And when it comes to heavyweights, you're looking for a knockout. Now, if Tyson Fury had knockout power with that mouth, even though he's from England, let me tell you something, he'd be exponentially more attractive. Me, you know where I'm going, Max. Because when you talk about the golden era of the heavyweight division, I'm going to the 70s with Ali and Frazier and Foreman and Quarry, Ernie Shavers running. I mean, lot of these boys. I mean, come on Eddie now. Norton. I mean, I mean, listen, I'm going to with the 80s with my Larry Hall Oscar and Bonavina. Mike Weaver and those boys. I want you to please. I mean, this, this right here, I respect the heavyweight division, but don't get me stuck. It doesn't compare to what we saw in the 70s. Let's put well, up the press well, on that right now. Yeah, well, Hold listen. On. There have been, the okay. 70s were great, the 90s were great. I'm saying the heavyweight division is back. I'm not saying it's better okay, than the 70s, okay, okay, but it's okay. back. I understand. No, 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 no. I, 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 I respect where you come from. They are back if that's the way you put it. I'm just saying don't tell me you sir. what I saw. No, 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 no. Let's no, no. get to Tyson. Going, like, the punching power, he likes the punching power. He's but not like, a puncher. I, I, I'm in love. I'm in yeah. love with the welterweight division. That's where yeah. I'm at. Yep. That, 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 when I think of boxing, and, and, and you know, and I saw him talking to Bob Aaron. Let me tell you something, because I love me some Bob Aaron. I really do. Let me tell you something, Bob. If you could sit up there and talk to Al Haynes about getting Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury in a rematch, you, you, you can talk about getting your boy Terrence Crawford in the ring with Errol Spence Jr. You can do it. Wait, God, you, I'm you're welterweight. absolutely right. Why not do business across all the different That's divisions? That's right. That's now, right. Now, I'll say this about the welterweights. Sure, the welterweights are an excellent division. Like in the 80s, when you had, in the early 80s, you had Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard and Wilfred Benitez and Roberto Duran. Golden era of welterweights, coming. and it was an amazing time. But Go whenever ahead. the heavyweights have the action, yes. it's always the best for boxing. The big boys are the best. When, that, when that's going strong, 
boxing is at its biggest best. And I want to say something about Tyson Fury. He's not a big puncher. But you know who can be big attractions when they're not big punchers? When you got the mouth and the personality. Like Floyd Mayweather wasn't a big puncher. Not at the heavyweight, but, Max. No, no, even heavyweight. Muhammad Ali, didn't, by the end, wasn't knocking a lot of guys out. But it became a thing where people were emotionally invested in him. So it wasn't about how he won. It was about whether or not he could win. And Tyson Fury is on the way if he can keep winning and, and being involved in big fights in being the kind to see whether or not he can pull rabbits out of his hat, not knock people out. The heavyweight division is going to be ultimately carried by Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder and that kind of collision. You gotta have knockout power as a heavyweight. Nobody can tolerate that from Floyd Mayweather dancing around for 12 rounds. They can't do that with heavyweights, I'm telling you. Ali, right. Ali was decisioning a lot of guys. What's going on guys? It's your boy Boxing Facts or Fiction. I need you guys to do me a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification icon for more videos like this. I just seen a video from ESPN First Take with Max Kellerman, Molly, and uh, Stephen A. Smith. These people are quite characters, man. Um, it seems like these guys get paid to run with, with their own narrative. Sometimes I don't even think these guys believe what they're saying, but they did make some points that I agree with. But like I was saying, some of the stuff these guys say, I don't even think they personally agree with it. They're just probably told to say stuff like that. Um, that's what it looks like, in my opinion, but it is what it is, but they did make some points that I agree with. First, we're going to go ahead and address Stephen A. Smith. Um, Stephen A. Smith, um, he got overzealous. He, well, not overzealous. He got uh, maybe a little upset. A, a little upset. He got a little upset. Stephen A. Smith got a little upset when Max Kellerman talked about Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury ushering in a golden era of heavyweights boxing. Stephen A. Smith, who's always assuming he thought Max Kellerman was saying Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and Tyson Fury are better than any ever any era he's ever seen, which Max Kellerman wasn't saying. Max Kellerman was only saying these guys are bringing heavyweight boxing back, which I agree with. They are bringing heavyweight boxing back. Um, he even mentioned about uh, Vladimir Klitschko, who was fighting over there in uh, where Germany, and he wasn't um, he wasn't really exciting. He wasn't really an exciting fighter. It was a boring time in heavyweight boxing. And then, boom, Anthony Joshua comes out of nowhere. Deontay Wilder starts to get known. Big Baby Miller, Tyson Fury beats Vladimir Klitschko. And now we have these three guys who are really talked about ushering in a golden era in heavyweight boxing. So I agree with Max Kellerman when he talks about these three guys. Because the heavyweight division had never been talked about like that before. When people talk about heavyweight division, they talk about the guys of the old. Like the Mike Tyson... The Ali, the Evander Holyfield, guys like that. Um, that's the stuff people talk about. They don't talk about uh, the Klitschko era like that. But Klitschko did what he had to do. But now they're talking about Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. These are the fights that are being talked about. And the heavyweight division is considered to be the most exciting division. So I agree with Max Kellerman when he says that. But there's some other stuff he said I didn't necessarily agree with. Um, concerning Tyson Fury. Um, I'm a fan of Tyson Fury. But um, when I watch heavyweight boxing, I like to see knockouts. I don't want, and I agree with, with uh, Stephen A. Smith. I don't want to see a, hev a Mayweather of the heavyweight division. If Tyson Fury had knockout power, he'll be the guy. But he don't have knockout power. He just has the skills. So, a lot of people are not interested in that. We love the skills, but we want to see some knockout power in there as well. So, uh, I agree with Stephen A. Smith a little bit on that. And he also talked about the welterweight division. He said, if Bob Arum is willing to make uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder with ESPN, he should be willing to make 
Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence Jr. Um, Bob Arum already stressed that he's willing to make that. So I don't know if he, uh, I don't know if uh, Stephen A. Smith seen interviews of Bob Arum saying it. He want that fight on pay per view though. So Stephen A. Smith needs to go back and do a little bit of more research before he says stuff like that. Because Bob Arum has already mentioned he wanted this fight. But uh, it was a great interview from both of these guys. It was a great segment. Maybe not an interview, but a great segment from uh, ESPN. Uh, first take. Molly didn't have a lot to say like usual, but Max Kellerman. Um, Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith get riled up, man. The guy gets so passionate when he starts talking. It's like there's a battery in his back. It's like the guy's a freaking robot. He just get riled up. I mean, he looks like a fake human being. He looks like a robot that you just turn on the robot and he just goes ahead and start running his mouth. Um, that's what it looks like in my opinion, but he has some valid points and I agree with some of his points. And I also agree with a lot of Max Kellerman points, but um, I do agree these three guys are ushering a new era of heavyweight boxing. Do me a favor, hit that like.